Hey guys, Alex here. Today we're going to explain DeepSeek R1. So what is DeepSeek R1? It is an AI model, just like ChatGPT, Grok, etc. So AI models are popping up all over the place. Artificial intelligence is the next big thing. So I'm going to explain what DeepSeek R1 is, which is a very hot topic right now. It is an open source AI model. And it's very different from other AI models. Uh, so there's two main huge differences. There's a lot of differences, but I'm going to go over what I think are the main two differences between other AI models. So one of the main differences, it uses a mixture of experts approach. So what is a mixture of experts approach? Basically, other AI models, they'll use all of their parameters and it kind of slows down the AI model. So what a mixture of experts approach is, for example, I believe... Uh, I believe this model has 671 billion parameters. It might be a little less. I would have to search it to be to have the exact number. And then it uses 37 billion parameters depending on the subject that you look up. So basically a mixture is a mixture of experts approach. So whatever topic you're searching for, it uses a certain amount of parameters that has been, you know, dedicated to it. Think of it like a panel of experts, right? You, you don't need to use the full AI model for that, for that prompt, basically. And this keeps the AI very fast. And you don't lose any quality of information because it is, like I said, a mixture of experts approach. So you're still getting the same amount of quality. Uh, you just do not need to use the entire model. You don't need to use all the parameters. So that is kind of what a, of a mixture of a experts is. Now, the other thing is reinforcement learning. So this model uses reinforcement learning and it doesn't really use supervised tuning. Basically, this AI model, it showed that an LLM, a large language model, can develop strong reasoning skills purely through reinforcement learning incentives. So that is just absolutely mind-blowing. Now, what is reinforcement learning without like a supervised fine tuning. Uh, the best example I can think of, think of off the top of my head would be, let's say a child is doing homework and they're just really not understanding it. Now, you let the child learn on its own and just figure it out. You know, let them, you know, overcome the adversity and just figure it out, even if it takes them a while, and let them learn. However, if they really just cannot figure it out, Sometimes you can give them a little nudge, but you don't sit there and supervise and teach them. You're not sitting there teaching them. You're not supervising them. But if they're struggling, you can give them a little nudge. But overall, uh, they completely learn on their own. Like DeepSeek R1 has basically learned on its own. Also, DeepSeek R1 is very accurate. It comes with a 71% accuracy compared to ChatGPT01 being 63% accurate. All right, guys, I am now on chat.deepseek.com. And this is where we're going to do a little bit of tests and insert some prompts. So this is my favorite part of the video. Uh, I love testing out new AI models. It's really, really fun. So I love, uh, this will be only the second time I've tested out DeepSeek. I did a little bit of a testing the past couple of days. So I would love to test this guys out for you and insert some prompts. Now, 99% of YouTubers will have some prompts prepared. My videos are totally unscripted. I do not have uh, anything ready here. So we're going to think of something really off the fly. Uh, it is very early in the morning. I have my canned nitro coffee. So I'm still a little bit waking up here. But we're going to think of a prompt to enter. And let's see. So instead of making you guys watch the AI Think which is just gonna kill a lot of video time because it's just gonna be thinking and we're gonna be waiting for a response. I'm gonna type up a bunch of questions and then I'm gonna show you it by clicking each tab. So I'll do that off of video and then I will show you what DeepSeek R1 came up with. So I'll show you the question and I will show you uh, the answer that it came up with. So I'll do that right now and then we'll get back into the video. All right guys, I have asked I've asked three questions here to DeepSeek R1. And we're going to go over the first one here. So give me a full list of things to study so I can pass a master's level computer architecture class. 
So basically, I'm kind of asking for a study guide, like what should I study? And it did a really great job here. To excel in a master's level computer architecture class, you need a comprehensive understanding of both foundational and advanced topics. So here's the structured study plan it came up with. So fundamentals of digital logic. And a lot of this stuff would not be in a bachelor's level computer architecture class. So it actually did a fantastic job here. So combinational circuits, sequential circuits, you get into many different sections here. Instruction set architecture, uh, computer arithmetic, processor, microarchitecture, memory systems, storage and I.O. systems, parallel architectures, advanced processor techniques, uh, power aware computing. Like this is great stuff, guys. Like, like this is a phenomenal study guide. Now, obviously, you got to go Google search it yourself or you got to uh, study, use the AI to study, basically. So how would you use the AI to study? Go down here and type in what I typed in was expand fundamentals of digital logic. So that'll expand the first part so you can kind of study it in more detail. So and then if you want to do it again, you would do expand this, expand this section right here. And then you'd go down here and expand this section. Therefore, you never really have to leave the AI model. You can do all your studying on the AI model itself. So you just keep expanding the sections and then expanding the subsections. And then you keep doing that over and over. So in the AI model, the AI model might have all the information you need to study. So for example, I expanded this section and it gives you a lot more information on each section. And then you can expand these sections as well. So I'm actually really impressed, uh, very impressed with all of the information that it came up with here. So we're going to get into the next, uh, the next question I had for the AI model. And I'll try to go through these a little faster, guys. Uh, this wasn't meant to be a long video today. So this one, I always like coming up with a, I always like asking AI models this question. I'm very much into physics and space myself. So I asked it, how can we eventually travel at light speed or beyond light speed? What technology would be needed and how many years is this going to take? Be as specific as possible and detailed as possible. I haven't even looked at this one yet. This is the first time I'm looking at it uh, with you guys. So achieving light speed or faster than light speed or faster than, yeah, faster than light travel remains one of the world's most ambitious and complex challenges in physics and engineering. While current technology and our understanding of physics make this impossible, theoretical frameworks and experience concepts uh, provide a roadmap for future possibilities. So it comes up with theoretical approaches, which the reason I like asking this question is it tests AI models theoretical uh, capacity, right? Like I want to test an AI model's theoretical capacity, you know, that's, that stuff is important to me. So not just like facts, but like, how good is it at theory? How good is it at theorizing? So, and it did, it looks like it did a pretty good job here. So overcoming uh, limitations, Einstein's rel relativity, according to Einstein's theory, a special relativity, objects with mass cannot reach or exceed the speed of light due to infinite energy requirements. Uh, so it tells you, like currently we can't, right? But if we figure out infinite energy, it is theoretically possible. Time dilation and length contraction also become significant at near light speeds, altering the travel's experience of time and space. Solutions to bypass these constraints, scientists propose manipulating space time itself rather than moving through it conventionally. Warp drive. So warp drive is a very famous concept and you would be able to go at the speed of light or very close to the speed of light. That allows the, so it allows a vessel to ride a wave of distor, distorted space time. This does not violate relativity since the ship itself does not move faster than light locally. You know, think, think of Star Trek, for example, guys. Uh, challenges, stability of the bubble, radiation hazards of the bubble edges, and ethical concerns about casualty violations. Uh, it would be very hard to come up with that idea, but it's in theory possible. So wormholes is another interesting concept, and it just goes through everything. 
It, like, I'm very impressed with this answer by DeepSeek R1. Uh, I did not think it would go through this level of detail and come up with this many theoretical solutions. It even It's even got wormholes in here. Similar to warp drives, negative energy is needed to keep the wormhole, wormhole stable. Basically, it, it's a point in space-time. You traverse through wormholes. Um, quantum entanglement. Wow, I was not expecting quantum entanglement to be in here. Exploit quantum entanglement to transit, uh, transmit information instantaneously. Sorry, my like inner nerd is coming out on me. Well, this could enable FTL communication, translating it to macroscopic objects like spacecraft is speculative. Uh, very interesting. Near light speed travel, propulsion technologies, nuclear propulsion, antimatter engines. Antimatter engines is pretty fascinating. Light cells. Uh, this is all great stuff. Like I'm actually going to read this off camera. I'm not going to read it all to you right now because I'm trying to keep this video short. So it gives timeline estimates. That is huge. I definitely wanted timeline estimates. So very grateful for this. So 2030 to 2100, nuclear thermal rockets and light cells for interplanetary travel, antimatter production scaling to milligrams. Midterm 2100 to 2200, crewed missions to nearby stars at 10% light speed using laser propelled cells or fusion engines. That actually sounds pretty realistic. Maybe more towards like 2150 to 2175. I think that is actually pretty possible. Then long term, 2200 plus. Transversible wormholes or warp drives contingent on exotic matter discovery. Ethical and legal frameworks. Now I think 2200 would be a little ambitious for wormholes or warp drives. But um, it does say 2200 plus. So maybe it means way beyond 2200. And who knows? Who knows what the future beholds in the next uh, 200 years, right? We're moving at a very fast pace already. Now, I asked this one more question. I always like asking AI models to come up with games. And to be fair to the AI model, I give it a game to like base it off of. So for this one, I asked, create a card game similar to Pokemon with slightly different rules. Give a full breakdown of how the game works. Also name the first 10 monsters. So uh, core mechanics, core rules and mechanics. Deck composition, each player has a 60 card deck. Cards include monster cards, creatures with elements, elemental affinities, abilities, and stats. Elemental essence cards, ability cards. Set up players, start with 30 light core points, shuffle your deck and draw five cards. Each player places one basic monster as their active beast. So honestly, looking at it, it, it looks like I did say similar to Pokemon, to be fair, although it made it a little too similar to Pokemon. Um, active ability cards or monster effects, monster mechanics, fire, water, nature, electric, earth, wind, light, shadow. But if you if you tune this a little bit, you can make it a lot different than Pokemon. And basically, it takes all the creativity for you. Like it, it does all the creativity for you. It makes the rules for you. That's the great thing about AI is you can come up with games. You can come up with card games, you know, things people take a long time to think of, right? It can just do this all for you automatically. It's one of the things I love about AI. And DeepSeek R1 did a great job here. Winning conditions. Like it gave you the full rule set. So let's see what monsters it came up with. Pyro Cub. Ability is Blazing Claws. It deals plus 10 damage of opponent if opponent's active beast is nature. Aqua Finch, water, tidal surge. Tidal surge is a really cool attack ability. Um, I might have to steal that if I ever make a game. Thank you, uh, Deep Sea Gar One. Stone Shell is a really cool sounding ability as well. So it came up with some really cool attack names. Shade Wolf, Voltaire. I'm, I have mixed reactions to some of the monster names, but the, the attack names are really cool. Uh, special rules. So it did a really good job here. And don't forget, we can always expand every section. Um, and we can come up with different rules too. So you just keep playing around with it. You keep playing around with it. You keep feeding it prompts. And you can make the game to your desire. 
So that'll be the video for today, guys. If you found this interesting at all, please like and subscribe and comment. When you do one of those things, it sends the video into the algorithm, which I really appreciate. So please leave a comment down below. Uh, your thoughts on DeepSeek, your thought on artificial intelligence, the future of artificial intelligence, and all of that. So I would really appreciate that as I am trying to grow the channel. Also, if you're wondering about the banner in the background, which I've never had before, uh, that is my future website I am launching, which I have talked about a lot on this channel, but it is not currently live and won't be live for probably another couple weeks. So you can just ignore that. So anyways, guys, thank you for watching the video. It means the world to me. Thank you so much.